This is episode 13 of the Big Data NBA video education series. And this is for my students, which is part of the Thinking Like a Data Scientist class. And I wanna show you what I personally think is the most powerful management tool that I have for getting to organizational consensus. So if we think about, remember the Thinking Like a Data Scientist process is what we're doing is, is we've identified a business initiative We've corralled all the stakeholders who are impacted by the business initiative. We have identified the decisions that they make and the KPIs against which they make or measure the effectiveness of those decisions. And then we group those decisions and KPIs into use cases. So we come up with a, a range, sometimes between six, eight to 10, 12, 14 use cases, all that support that key business initiative. That's great. The problem though is that's too many. And so how do you get alignment across these different stakeholders identifying where and how, or in particular, what use case are we gonna start with? That's the prioritization matrix. And so what we do is in this example here, I've, I've listed each of the use cases as a separate letter and based on your interview process and, and discussion process, you're gonna bring the users together and you're gonna place each one of these use cases on this prioritization matrix based on two key variables. The value, right? And we know value is not just financial value. There's all kinds of other KPIs and metrics against which we use to measure value. It could be customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction, and things like diversity in society and community and um, environmental issues and operational effectiveness. And those are all kinds of ways that we can measure value. And you're gonna want to surface those variables, those KPIs that measure those different sources of value in the interview process so you can have those in hand as you go through this process. The other variable here is feasibility. And I like to say feasibility over the next 12 to 18 months. I wanna box it so I can generate some sort of sense of urgency to get something done. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each of these different use cases and go through a process with the users and figure out where do each of these sit on the road, on this map. And you, you start by putting places, you know, A, we think has high value and pretty high feasibility. And then we come along with B, and we say that B, well, it's easier, but it's not as valuable. Then we got something like C comes along, right? Which if I can get it off here is, uh, let's go to D. <laughs> go to use case D, right? And use case D is one of those things, well, Will, it's kind of middle. It's got basically, you know, medium value, medium feasibility. And I want to get C off here. And so C comes across here and C is one of these things where it sits sort of right here. And you'll have F that sits over here, which basically is one of those cases where it has high value, but no feasibility of success. And by the way, I can't tell you how many organizations want to start here because it has the most value. It's also the most fe infeasible. So it's also like a formula to failure. So I'm not going to lay them all out here, but you should understand there's some zones here. Like there's zones down here that are very easy to do, but don't have any business or operational value. This is kind of like my favorite. This is the SAP data warehouse, right? It's like, well, I bet, do I really need one, right? Or you have these, I'll put H here because I can get it off easily. This one down here that has little value and is really hard to do. Why would you ever start there? But the real beauty of this process is getting people together and saying, okay, is this where we want this to be? Maybe the, maybe the sponsor for D says, you know what? It's a lot more valuable than that. It's not fair. And you'll say, well, tell me why. Why, why is it more valuable than A? You know, justify to me, explain to me why B is more valuable than A. Or somebody might say, you've got one, let's take J over here. Or let's, uh, we've got G, so it's over here. It's, you know, it's, it's high value, but it's not as feasible. And they say, well, we can make this more feasible by doing this and by doing that. The beauty of this process is it's very interactive. You bring all the stakeholders together, you gather around a whiteboard and you argue and debate the value placement and the feasibility placement. And that in, you force people to have to justify when they want to move something, when they want to make B more valuable. And as a, as a facilitator of this process, you have a chance to ask. You can say, well, what makes G more valuable than C? Or C more valuable than D? Or B more feasible than C? You can have these conversations. And when you have these stakeholders here, you're going to get a wide, diverse set of perspectives. You're going to hear different arguments. You're going to hear different positioning. And that's what you want. You want to get all of that out on the table so that you come back to the group and you finally have gotten this thing organized in a way that everybody sort of feels comfortable with it. These were, this is where things stand. Then you can say, okay, where do you want to start? 
right? Do you want to start with B, which is the easiest and has value? Or do you want to start with A that has more value that is harder to do? Or do you want to do with C, which is kind of both? Or maybe somebody says, let's go with G, right? But you're going to come out of this process and you're going to pick one. Let's say you pick A. Why? Because it has the right value. It's got the right sort of, the, the feasibility is a, is a very manageable thing. And that's your first use case. And then maybe your second use case is this one. Because once you do this one, this becomes much easier. In fact, after you do this one here, maybe this one goes like this, becomes both valuable and more easy or more feasible. And so you have this process that as you start doing these projects, you start doing one, then two, and then three, and then reevaluate what you might find as something like G, because you did one, two, and three, all of a sudden G starts marching across. It becomes more feasible because of all the work you've done here. Or D becomes more valuable and feasible because it can combine with these things. All of a sudden D starts to appear up here. Or even C can, or E can make a march up here. The key point of this is to get everybody around the room with a solid understanding of these use cases, what it is they're trying to accomplish, what decisions they're trying to drive, and what are the KPIs around which we're going to measure the effectiveness of those use cases, and then nurture, encourage a conversation a debate, friction if you want, to have that conversation to really vet out where do these things sit vis-a-vis -vis each other. When you walk out of that room then, you'll know why we're gonna start with A, why we're gonna go to, to C next, and why we're gonna go to B third, and then how we're gonna bring the, or the group back together to reevaluate the remaining ones, and maybe identify a few that we can build out this, this use case uh, roadmap that allows us as an organization to build out our data and analytics capabilities, one use case at a time where each use case has a positive ROI because it delivers value and it has a high feasibility of success. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Again, this is my most valuable tool I have and there's nothing more enjoyable to me personally than to run one of these sessions and listen to all the creative thinking and energy that a room has trying to figure out where and how we place these things and building a plan for how we become more effective at leveraging data and analytics to power the business. Cheers.